good. I guess, uh, Tom, I guess kind of what's maybe the week been like for you? I guess I... A little bit of a whirlwind. Yeah. Uh, so obviously came in Monday, made the corrections, and we're moving forward. Uh, you know, we had a really good meetings, practice yesterday, more of a walkthrough so we could install. And we're excited to get out on the grass and work with some speed and work or pads on so we can work on our tech techniques and fundamentals. The Colts talked after the game saying that they had seen some things on tape. Uh, has there been any self-scouting to me? You know, we we self-scout sure? every week and, you know, we look at all six different, you know, units to make sure that, you know, we're looking at ourselves first before we look at the next opponent. How are things going to continue to go now, like with yourself and, and Coach Levine and, and some of the other We're moving forward as a two-man team. Uh, we work well together. Obviously, you know, a little bit more work. We're, we were used to doing it with three. Now we're doing it with two. So we've got uh, big shoulders to, to get the job done. How much does it change? Obviously, Stonehouse was such a weapon, able to kick 50 and 60-yard punts. How much does it change the coverage with a new punter who may not have that uh, strong, a strong It layout? changes the angles a little bit because it's not as far down the field. Um, but, you know, Ryan Stonehouse, he, he's tremendous. Because I come in off the street, he doesn't know me, and I really don't know him. And he led the league in gross punting last year, and he was so coachable and so teachable and wanted to get better. So I really, you know, respect the heck out of him for that. Feel bad for what happened to him, but he's got great spirits, and he's looking to move forward. You say your philosophy is coaching special teams, and will there be any changes you can make? During now, that? me and uh, Levine, we're, we're pretty similar. Uh, come from, you know, kind of cut from the same cloth. We like to keep things simple so we can play fast and physical. So again, that's it in a nutshell right there. So when you said you came in Monday and made some corrections, what specific? Well, no, we do that every Monday. You know, you come in, you look at the tape and what you did well, what you need to improve on, and we move forward. So coming off last week, what things did you guys have? We had to get better in our punt protection with our techniques and fundamentals. How important is that extra day playing on Monday to kind of get guys adjusted in new roles, like a new punter, a new holder, and obviously changing things? Yeah, you know, we got some work yesterday with the holds, and we'll get some work uh, with the drops yesterday, and then we'll work on the whole operation today, and we'll get the punt operation. So it'll be a good transition for him. What options do you have at protector if Wiley can't go? Uh, we'll roll some different guys uh, in there. Jonathan Ward could be a guy, and that's – Good thing, like a lot of guys are going to get some opportunities. So what they do with them is, is up to them. So we're excited about that. We've been really pleased with the progress of the young guys, you know, the Colton Dows, uh, Anthony Kendalls. They've really made some good strides. So we're looking for some other guys to step up and help us. You know, we got JoJo Doman in, and he, he's done that role before. So those are the two options we're looking at right now. What's the right amount for emergency situation work like Tannehill working as a holder? Well, we try and do that, you know, once a week, once every couple of weeks. And sometimes it changes based on what the roster is, you know, who your backup snapper is, backup returners and all that. Why, so you sorry, why, why would once every couple of weeks be sufficient when something could be so important like Tannehill's holder? Well, it's some, you know, snapping, we snap every day with emergency snappers. Sometimes with the holder, we get them once a week. We just try and mix it in. Nick has so many kicks, has so many kicks in his leg. So again, we try and protect him with that. So it's not like he can just kick, you know, another four or five, six balls. What have you seen from Ty coming in? And does it help to kind of already have that stable veteran presence with Morgan Cox? That, that helps with Morgan, yeah, because he's a, a voice of reason. He's seen it and done it. Um, you know, I took a look at Ty coming out of college when I worked him out at Kansas State, and so he's athletic. Um, so again, going forward, I think that would really help him having Morgan back there, and it also helps having Nick, you know, help him with the holds as well. On the holder side of things, how do you determine whether or not it's going to be Tannehill or if it's going to be Ty? Uh, it's going to be Ty. Okay. We're comfortable with Ty. Is there anything you have to do coaching-wise to help him develop that chemistry, Morgan and Ty, or is that kind of you trust them to do it? Well, we get enough reps so they they feel comfortable. But there's a lot of chemistry that is built throughout the off season and the season. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Of the game, or did you report issues, or how did that go on Sunday when you you went to the medical tent and then to the locker room and and then didn't get to return to the game? Yeah, um, I guess they seen something that they felt like I, I couldn't return. Um, I felt fine. Um, just took a, a, a helmet to helmet hit, and um, um, I guess they seen enough where I couldn't go back in. I wanted to go back in. It was hard to watch, but 
You know, I just got to respect their decision. Do you make a play at that point and try to fight to get back in, or, you, or there's no such thing? No, I'm just watching the game. I, I can't fight it. I mean, it's the, their, their decision. It's, it's, their, it's their call. Um, you know, it, it sucked, but, you know, you, you got to respect it. Um, you know, I wanted to go out there and continue to play and, and help them win, but, you know, they – they said different, so. Did you feel anything even at the moment? From Say it again? Did you feel anything at the moment even from the head or not? No, I, I feel good. You know, you just got hit in the head and, you know, get the bell rung a little bit, get back up, shake it off, and try to go back in, but, you know, they didn't let that happen, so. You had a good, you had a good week, Derek, and it felt good all the way through? Yeah, I feel good. Were you diagnosed? Specific, or did they just say, no, no, I, I, uh, I wasn't. But um, I think the league is trying to be precautious on, you know, head injuries and guys who stumble, which I respect. You know, it's all about player safety, and those things are serious. And in the past years, you know, guys had injuries, and you know, it's, you know, it's kind of lingered a little bit. So I respect. That. I won't go argue it. It is what it is. This season hadn't gone the way you guys have wanted it, obviously. But you guys still get. You guys still get fired up and circle a, a prime time game this late in the year, even if you're not in contention. Yeah, I mean every game is fun. You know, you still get an opportunity to go out there and play, and um, showcase what you work for individually and as a team. And um, that's all. That's all you can do. Um, you know, football is still fun. You know, lose or win. Obviously, we want to win, but it's still about having fun and, and enjoying this game and enjoying this time because you know we're blessed with the opportunity. You know, you gotta be grateful for it. The last time you guys went to Miami, it was that. What, seven plus hours? Oh, game. Lord. Yeah, I remember that. What did you do during that break? How did you keep yourself ready? Say it again? During that, that delay, it was three hours at one point. What did you do to keep yourself ready and just able to go back out there? Walk around, joke with everybody in the locker room, keep my legs warm. Um, uh, probably had a hot dog. This is the, uh, I, I think, I mean, I, it was so long ago. It was That was a long game. But um, yeah, just, just sitting in the locker room, waiting to go back out, trying to stay warm as possible. And um, but yeah, that was a crazy game. When you went back out, did, did you have to do anything different, like to get ready quicker? Because there was, I think it was, like, they told you like in ten minutes you guys had to get back out. Some guys were still eating. Yeah, yeah. There were issues there. I know. I was straight. I think I just did a little warm up and was ready to go. I, think I actually had a touch and I got called back, so I felt, I felt, I felt pretty good. <laughs> How good the Dolphins? Obviously good on offense. But what do you see from them defensively? An aggressive defense. Um. Uh, Penetrating linebackers, obviously, a uh, uh, um, experienced secondary. Um, I think they're solid all the way around. Um, they get to the ball. They play. They play fast. They're physical. Um, you know, secondary is really good. Um, took a hail mary back, what ninety something yards. So um, you know they got playmakers all over the field. So just gotta uh, be locked in this week, like every week and definitely um, pay attention to the little things and um, be included on the fundamentals and everything we need to do just so we can execute and give ourselves a chance. Have you gotten to know Tua over the years? No, not, not really. Um, but I've seen him, we speak every now and then, but I don't really know him that much. No. Were you encouraged by the success you had in the run game uh, before having to leave or in the fourth quarter? Is that something you feel like you need to build on this week to try to keep the ball away from them? Let's just say it's a little better than the week before. Um, a lot of good things to build off of. I thought the line did a great job. Everybody blocking did a great job. And, you know, I just had to go out there and do my job. And they definitely made it a little easier um, last Sunday, even though we didn't come up to win. But I thought they did a great job. What did you think of Ty J uh, after you were out? Uh, he stepped in. I mean, I had no question that he wouldn't go out there and, and, and do his job and be effective as he's been all season. thought he did good. Derek, how have you seen Will uh, continue to grow as a leader over the last several weeks? Um, I thought he, he's been growing every day. That's all you want, you know, as a rookie coming in and um, taking over the starting job is continue to grow, continue to get better and um, progress as, as time goes on. I mean, I don't want him to jump, you know, for, for first downs every now and then. But, um, you know, he's been been, been uh, playing his, his butt off and um, he's all, all, all he can do is continue to grow as a player. What does it do for you when you see him running down after that ball's knocked out of his hands and he helps recover it? Yeah, I was saying, get down, get down. But um, uh, then, um, yeah, when he when he did that, that just shows his will and um, doing whatever he can for the team for for us to win. I thought that was a pretty cool play to show his effort. So, Derek, how much are you looking forward to uh, seeing David Long? Oh yeah, I haven't seen David Long in a while. I'm sure he'd be shooting gaps, 
trying to stop us in the run game. So, yeah, def def definitely familiar with David from last year and the years he's been here and how he's going to play the run and how he plays. He's an explosive player, so he's going to be out there wanting to make plays. He's going to be amped up for sure. You can always walk out with, with Jeffrey down the tunnel and out I know. Of How different is that going to be? And, and what do you say to him? I was like, dang, I ain't going to have you um, when we go out for pregame. But, um, you know, he's working hard to get back. It'll be a little different. Um, I'm about to use uh, Danico or uh, Aziz to replace him, but um, yeah, we're definitely going to miss him. It was five years ago yesterday, the anniversary of 99 yards in Jacksonville, and uh, or, sorry, here against Jacksonville, but since then, you are leaps and bounds over every other running back in yards and touchdowns in the league. How do you explain the crazy run that this has been for five years now? Yeah, I mean, God is good. Um, we get all the glory to God. Uh, very thankful to be where I'm at today, um, not knowing what was going to happen, you know, during that time and in that game, kind of streaming before a little bit. Um, just thankful, man, and, and blessed. Um, as a kid, it's everything that I ever wanted to have a chance to play this long and have the success, I, success I've had. Uh, the people who've um, contributed to my success, just been thankful for this whole journey. Um, and um, you know. Just want to keep it going and be able to play as long as I can. Derek, on the lines of that, just people contributing to your success, how often do you keep in touch with Coach Saban, maybe in the off season, or do you at all? Because I feel like he's such a motivator still in a lot of your guys' lives that are in the NFL. Um, yeah, he usually reaches out at the end of the season, um, just just check on guys, um, see how everybody's doing. You know, when he has a chance. You know, he's a busy guy. He's on Pat McAfee and you know traveling, doing all these different things and all these different shows, but. He usually checks in whenever he has some free time. Um, I, I usually know it's him as a private number. You know, nobody else nobody else calls me from private but him, so it's usually him. Talk about expressing that gratitude. Over the last year, has it been tougher to keep that mindset as the wins haven't been coming as easily, or has it still kind of come naturally to, to keep that world in perspective? No, I mean, I'm eight years in this league. Um, you know, uh, win or loss. You still got to go get up and, and go to work and um, continue to improve and continue to get better. And if you love playing this game, you love getting better, you love competing, then you know, you're going to continue to do that. Win or loss, um, keep that hungry mindset. And that's how I've always been. Um, so I'm still going to attack the day, attack every practice, and do my job the best I can. Yeah, the world just want to be better, want to improve, taking the meetings to practice, and then letting it translate to to the game. And I feel like they're doing their best, their best job to try to do that. It ain't gonna be perfect, you know, like we all say to each other. But just try to do the best you can. Some some plays, you know, they're gonna get us, and then some plays we'll win. But as long as you just keep working and stay locked in, then you know everything can happen the way we wanted to. You had one play or one game from your time here that you'd say was your favorite moment, what would it be? Um, I, I guess say that for the end, the end of the year, end of the season. Not right now, I don't know right now, but at the end of the year, I have an answer for you. So just remember that question and ask me again. We got one more for you. Who was it that started the tradition of maybe putting the crown on your head after you scored? Do you remember who did that for the first time? Uh, I don't know if it was Corey or Tajay. One of them two, um, they started, or maybe AJ, I don't know. But it's been going on for a while, and hopefully we keep it going this week too, so. <laughs> All right. All right. What'd you think of the work Ty J did after, after he came in? Yeah, he did a, he did a really good job. Um, you know, being able to go and, and, you know, we didn't have to alter any of our calls or the way that we were planning on attacking him. He was able to go out and execute. Um, and, and did so at a high level uh, and, and kind of, you know, for the first time, he, the next, the, the, don't want to speak for him, but I bet the next day he kind of felt a little bit differently after having a little bit heavier usage rate. So um, he did a really good job for us uh, being able to step in when we needed him to. Tim, uh, the offense was productive on, on so many drives on, on Sunday and then hit that lull. Yeah, yeah. What, what, are there the same issues that are popping up in those lulls that, that when the offense has struggled at times this year? Um, you know, uh, we had a missed opportunity on a third down, um, you know, where we uh, had an opportunity uh, and just didn't see them. Um, you know, tried to take a, a, a little bit of a chunk on first down on one of them. Corner fell off and made a good play. Uh, the ball to Hopkins on their sideline. 
Um, so it was kind of more of just a, a inability to, to make a play and inability to me to get them a better play call. Uh, it didn't off the top of my head. Um, you know, there they, it didn't seem like there were the you know self-inflicted wounds that we had talked about previously. Um, that that wasn't something that was glaring in those particular drives. So, um, you know, we just got to do a good job. I got to do a better job of getting us into a rhythm um, with a different play call, and then uh, being able to go ahead and take advantage of those opportunities when when and if they do arrive. Do you see what is a coincidence that those lulls have happened right at the start of the third quarter in the last two weeks? Or something that can be done. I I, I don't. Um, you know, uh, that was a unique situation. Obviously, going in for halftime, and then. Um, there was a long drive, and, and I think that was probably the first time Will's had to deal with that in terms of really, you know, in real time, it was probably, you know, plus uh, 30 minutes since he, since he had thrown a pass. So, um, you know, he's, we, I've got to do a better job, like I said, getting him into a rhythm sooner uh, as opposed to, to waiting and, and maybe being a little bit overly aggressive there with some of the, some of the calls that I made. How did Jalen do in his second game as a starter? Yeah. Um, you know, saw areas of improvement. Um, you know, uh, did a better job playing in the line of scrimmage. Um, obviously, there's there's just like every game for every player, right? There's going to be things that he did well and things that he needs to improve on. So, uh, you know, Haas, is, Haas has been clear with him as, as far as, uh, um, you know, what those areas are. And, and, you know, looking forward to him getting an opportunity to be able to go out there and work on that here in a, in, in, in a few minutes. We saw last week, I think it was the first play, DeAndre Hopkins, he got the ball to him. How do you balance that whole process of like, getting your guys involved early versus scheming to what the defense is doing, and especially with a guy like Trey Burks? Yeah, um, and and it's uh, you know you you're trying to find out different ways to get uh, get those guys the ball. Obviously, you have an idea as to what what you're expecting to see uh, coverage wise, um, you know front wise. Obviously, with Derek, it's easy. You can just turn around and hand it to him. Um, but with some of these other guys, you know, trying to trying to be able to get a feel for, um, you know, what what the coverage is is going to be, uh, what's a favorable matchup, um, and, and really trying to figure out where the ball should go. Now, does it always go there? No. Um, but you know, there's obviously plays that that we have designed, um, you know, that we have star dotted whatever for certain players where we think like, hey, there's a good chance that, you know, if we get if we get the coverage we think we're going to get, so and so should get the ball. So, uh, you know, there's a number of different guys that that have you know those those different types of plays, um, and, and Traylon's one of those guys. So, uh, again, now now that he's going to be back out here with a, a full week of prep and, and all that, it's going to be good to see, uh, you know, what he can do here uh, Monday night. Why does that happen? Does that happen often? Does that happen often where you go into a week like, hey, I have to get so and so to football early to get him established? Um. Yeah, I think you're always trying to get your playmakers the ball, um, you know, and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you know, I think just thinking back to the to the Chargers game, we had a plan to try to get hot the ball early, and I don't think he caught one until late in the second quarter, which was third down, and it was, you know, it wasn't one of those plays where it's like, hey, we think this is, you know, the one that he's going to get. So um, there, there's always a, a, an intent to try and get those players the ball. It's just, you know, how the game shakes out and, and if the ball finds them at the right time. Why does it always seem so hard to get trailing? Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't necessarily see it that way. Um, you know, when when you have a you know Hop, you have Derek, you you have Tajay, um, you have Chig. You, there's a there's a number of different um, guys that you're trying to get the football to, um, and, and and like I said, um, you know, uh, was it best laid plans of mice and men? Is that the that the saying? Hopefully, I didn't screw that up. Um, you can go in there with, the, with with all the intent of the world of, of having a play designed to get to somebody, and unless there's only one option, like it's 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 really not up to us. Um, so, again, some of it's luck, uh, some of it's it's you know uh, being able to, to to find a way to make the play when it finds you, and then some of it's you know going to fall on the design. So, um, I, I don't necessarily think that it's difficult to try and do that. I just don't know if it's worked out uh, the way that we've wanted it to right now. I guess the decision for Kyle to be inactive, mainly regarding to special teams. What do you tell him to kind of keep plugging, and, and how's he kind of done? Yeah, uh, I mean he's handled it like a professional. Obviously, again, don't want to speak for him, um, but uh, he's come out here, and, and, and you wouldn't be able to tell by his demeanor or the way that he's attacked practice. You know, we we tell our guys just like. Uh, 
uh, you know, everybody on the roster, you, you got to do a great job of preparing as if you're a starter because uh, you never know uh, when, when we're going to need you uh, to be ready to go out there and play. So um, Kyle's done a good job coming in here, not, not missing a beat and, and preparing as if, you know, he's going to be a starter for us. How early in the week do you get an indication that a guy like in Kyle's situation who's been up and playing and kind of developed a rapport with Will that he might not be a, a, an active on Sunday? Yeah, it varies. Is there anything more that he can do to get active? Like, do you need to see something more from here? Is it just kind of how the chips fall? There's a lot that goes into it. He's just got to keep coming out here and really control the things that he can control coming out here and, and um, being reliable, uh, doing a good job in the meeting room, preparing. Um, and, and, you know, making sure that when, when he's out here and the ball finds him, he continues uh, to make the play. Go ahead. He's kind of taking on a different identity this year, specifically that pass rush. Mm-hmm. What have you seen from that front? What makes them so difficult? Yeah, they're, they are, uh, they're a physical group. They're attacking. Um, you know, they can attack you from, from, you know, every position. Obviously, Chubb probably gets all the hype. Um, 94 is a good player. He's disruptive on the inside. Um, you know, they're, they're – they, uh, they're playing fast, they're playing physical, and, and they're playing hard. And, and when you get a front that can consistently do that, um, you know, they, they typically have success. So uh, I would say that those guys up front for them are doing a good job playing with that type of mindset. Related sometimes with the defense? Oh, I, didn't hear the, I didn't hear the start of it, sorry. With a guy like Cal, is it matchup related sometimes, like in a given week? Yeah, sure, sure. I think there's, a, you know, obviously it's a there, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, ultimately, it's going to be who's going to be able to give us the best chance to win a game. So, um, you know, it's not just uh, offensive production. Um, obviously, that from from my standpoint, from my standpoint, that plays a role in it. Um, but it's 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 what combination of guys is going to give us the best chance to go out there and win. Yeah, when you look at the offense on the opposite side, obviously with Miami, and you know how many points they can put up in a game. Mm-hmm. What do you say to your quarterback this week? Your young yeah, he's. We've got to do a good job um, being able to go out there and execute our game plan. Uh, you know, he's he's not going to take one snap against Tua, against anybody, against Tyreek, any of those guys on on offense. Uh, he's need to, he needs to be focused on on the defense that we're getting ready to go play, um, and, and he needs to go out there and execute the game plan. And if he does that, right, he's going to give us a chance to go out there and have a good night. Will has been saying that he feels feels like last week was his worst game as a Titan. Mike didn't necessarily see it that way. I kind of wonder where you fall in line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, similar to what we were talking about with Jalen, right? There's, there's always going to be, be plays where you know you're, you're going to want to have some back, and, and you're always going to be uh, excited about some of the things that you saw, like sweating out uh, the touchdown pass, the to hop, right? He, it was zero. Uh, they're bringing pressure. He's got to wait to see how that thing's shaking out. He's getting a little bit of a pressure there from the left side, and he's able to deliver a strike. And um, you know that was something that it was good to see because he made development from Friday to Sunday during the game. Um, you know, there's an opportunity, in, in, in whether it was overtime or late in the fourth, where you know he had a chance and, and you just didn't see him. So um, I wouldn't say that it was his worst game, uh, but as always, there's going to be stuff that we're going to look to build on and stuff that we're going to look to improve on. Uh, uh, right now, I'm worried about the Dolphins, so that, 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 that's all I'm seeing. Thank you, guys. Uh, when you look at them on tape, I mean, what uh, a lot of things obviously probably jump out at you. I guess the speed probably number one, and, and what's the best way to contain it? Yeah, um, definitely the speed. I mean, they got it at every position. Um, you're going to have to do a good job making sure they don't get behind us. Obviously, a better job than what we did on uh, Sunday. Um, backs are really fast, explosive. I think they lead the league in yards per rush. Um, if you give them space, they're going to crease you. Got the ability to hit the home run, running the ball as well. Um, just a unique scheme, a challenging scheme. The fullbacks in play, the two back stuffs in play, and then obviously with the playmakers on the outside, there's a lot to defend. Jane, you've been so good in the red zone, but this Miami Dolphins team is tops in the red zone, like 75. Yep. What makes them different and so much more difficult? To yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's a little bit of the scheme that shows up. Uh, they do a really good job scheming plays up, finding ways to attack defenses. Um, and then they got playmakers who can run away from guys who, who's been able to make plays. They, I see the ball getting thrown, and they make go up and make plays on it, you know. So um, it's going to be a big challenge for us. We just got to make sure we're fundamentally sound. Our eyes are great always. That's out in the field as well uh, with all the stuff they show you. Uh, 
it is it's different. I mean, you don't see a fullback all the time in the league anymore. So that ele- as an element, there's just so much going on pre-snap, um, and they do it out of all personnel groups. Uh, it's really tough to get a gauge based on what personnel, what they're going to do, what picture they're going to show in. And it's always going to be changing, right? So um, it is. It's challenging. Just the diversity of everything that they're doing and the skill sets allow them to do a lot of different things, especially at running back. Those guys are out wide. They're doing different things. They're motioning. So I think the skill sets allow them a lot of versatility. What are some of the adjustments you have to make to face a left-handed quarterback? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just understanding how the ball is being released, being able to match the hand. Like we preach all all the time, make sure we're trying to get our left hand up because more times than not, that's where the ball is coming over our head at. Um, So up front, being able to adjust that, get our right hand up. Um, really, other than that, maybe just in terms of the RPO game, where the, what side the ball's coming out at, at a quicker quicker pace than what it would with a right-handed quarterback. Are you guys even bored with Jeffrey being out, or they just know that everybody's going to have to be better? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the nature of the league, Jim. Like, we've we've been here, we've, we've gone through it here these past few years, and I mean, I, they all got jobs to do, right? And they might have to do a little bit more. They they might be counted on a little bit more. Play time's going to increase with some guys. Um, but ultimately, they got a job to do. We got to go out there and do it. And hopefully, we're doing it, all 11 guys doing it together. Like, it's not just on one guy, two guys to make up for that type of production. It's going to take the whole unit and just making sure these guys don't try to do too much. Just go out there and do your job. Don't try to do too much. What did you see from Kayvon Wallace? And is he earning more snaps in the defense now that he's kind of got his feet under him? Yeah, I've been pleased with Kayvon. I think he's progressed here these past few weeks, uh, just his understanding what we're doing schematically. Um, you see the speed out there. You see some physicality from him, which we could uh, refrain from the taunting penalty, obviously. Um, but he's progressed well. I think his understanding is getting to a level where some of these other guys are starting to trust him and the communication and all that goes with it. Like It's always been a been a big thing for us in the back end is the communication aspect of it, and I think he's taking strides there. Why can't he refrain from the taunting penalty? I mean, I think it's an emotional game. I think sometimes in the heat of the battle, those things happen. We coach it. We Rabe shows them all the time. Um, in squad meetings, we, we harp on it. Hopefully, it's a learning experience for everybody else. Later in the game, you see Aziz with a big time third and one stop, and he stands up. And he's looking over there, and Christian Fulton runs right in front of him to celebrate with him, right? So it's just continuing to heart, man. Celebrate, on, celebrate with your teammates. Like, they're going to call it everything. If you direct at an opponent, make sure you're celebrating with your teammates. You can do whatever you want. You can cuff them. You can point at them. Whatever you want if you're doing it to a teammate. You look at Wallace and, and even uh, Edmonds. You know, they came over from other teams. The, sit, the hand signals and stuff. Like, how do you go about deprogramming them and then reprogramming them? What you guys use. Yeah, with with all these guys that come from other teams, it, it's always terminology, right? Like terminology is always the thing because everybody kind of does the same stuff for the most part. I know there's some unique schemes out there, but it's you play man, you play cover three, you play quarters, you play cover two. Everybody's got the same basic scheme fundamentals in their systems. Um, it's really just the terminology aspect and then getting to the point where they understand what terms go with what signals. And I think that's just through repetition, breaking some of those old habits. You look at uh, you know, Tyreek Hill, obviously teams are planning to try to slow him down or stop him, yet he's running wide open in secondary every week. Is that just because he's faster than everybody or is it because <sighs> of what Mike McDaniel is scheming to get him open? I think it's both. I do. I think it's both. They're finding ways to get him one on one down the field. Um, Two is putting the ball in the right spot. He's got an unbelievable knack for locating the ball in the air. You saw that Washington play. I'm sure he's over one shoulder, turns back over the other, catches it for for a touchdown. Um, I think the catch and run ability. Right, they catch him in stride. Two is accurate on those inside routes. They catch him in stride, and he's. See you later, right? Happened against the Raiders. Um, so they're finding unique ways to get him the ball that I think kind of bring his skill set to life even more than what it's been at times.